with Herman and Sharon. All right. It's time. There's Here Sharon <laughs> and that other dude next to her. Let me shine, close your door on it because oh. it just looks better. You, know you want to close it all the way? No, no. Just so I want them to see the mountains in well, That's there. what I thought. That's just, why I left it open. Well, they can see kind of through the crack of the door. So how are you doing today? I'm just great. How about you? Let me give you my open signal. That's I love you. I was just thinking the other day, I did that on the first show. Mm -hmm. Actually, it wasn't the first show. It was the first senior adult program in 1977. And you've been doing it ever since. That's right. Most of the time. Most of the day. We have a guy on today that everybody knows. <laughs> and when you see him, you'll probably say, I remember that guy. Mm-hmm. A tremendous testimony. He's written about it. His gorgeous, beautiful, precious wife, mm -hmm. and the story that you need to hear. But before we hear that story, Dave, show them that clip. It's brand new and larger than life. Welcome to Yankee Stadium, the inaugural season. My name is Dan Wheeler, I'm your host, and QVC is proud to bring you the first two-hour national broadcast from the most majestic new stadium in the world. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Daryl Hall and John Oates. star of tonight's show, Cal Ripken Jr., number eight. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing fantastic. My special guest tonight is the magic man on and off the court, Irvin Magic Johnson. The Bayou Bomber, Mr. Brett Favre, joins us. Good to see you again, good Brett. Good How are you? I'm doing good. Gisborne is actually closer to the sunrise than any other city. So today, we're actually leading the world into the dawn of a new millennium. We welcome Jeff Cook, Teddy Gentry, and Randy Owen of Alabama. Good to see you guys again. How you doing? Great to see you. Hey, great to see you. It is my pleasure to welcome Hall of Famer Yogi Berra to QVC. Mr. Berra, what an honor. Glad to be here. The driving force behind Orange County Choppers joins me right now, Paul Tuttle. How you doing, Paul? Great, doing good. great to see you. World Series MVP Cole Hamill. Let me see what's going on with Dan Weaver. Well, Paul, the trophy presentation is being made right behind me. The Denver Broncos are the champions of Super Bowl 33. John Elway, unanimous selection for MVP. Welcome future Hall of Famer, John Elway. It's my pleasure to welcome Hall of Fame quarterback Roger Staubach to QVC. Hello, Thanks. Roger. How you doing? Thanks, Dan. Good to be here. Broadway Joe Namath. Joe, hey. great to see you again. Thank you, Dan. Who's stopping by is none other than country music legend Randy Travis. So nice to have you here tonight, Randy. How about you? Thanks for having me. Dan Marino, thank you so much and congratulations. Thank you, Dan. And it's time it's to party. Good to see you, congratulations. Buddy. Yep, Thanks. You're right. Good to see you're right. you too. Right. Mickey Mantle, you're a hero to all of us. Thanks so much. Thank you, Dan. Jolton, Joe DiMaggio. Well, you know I try not to associate with anybody but winners. And I'm with some winners right here. I can't oh, tell you how much you, all of us in sports. Appreciate the job you did. I saw so many people that like, that young man that was hosting that show was so nice. And uh, you had a lot of fans out there. Oh, come on. And, then, and these ladies <laughs> were saying, you know, how could you not buy something from that young man? <laughs> you are too kind. Steve, thanks for the memories and thanks for My stopping pleasure. by. My pleasure. No, it's good to be with you. Uh, you. You know, it's funny, of all the interviews I have, you always have a couple little snippets that uh, no one else knows. Oh, thank it's you. It's really great. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> I might have to break out one of my moves for that. That was just, come on, man, that was awesome. You guys rock. Live from Yankee Stadium, God bless everyone. Have a great night. Let yeah. me introduce Dan Wheeler right here. Whoa. Thank you. Hello, Herman. Yeah. How are you? Good to see you. Hello, uh, Sharon. Uh, well, thank you for having all of me. that. With all of that yeah. Yeah. group of people, yes. you know what I feel like? About like this. <laughs> oh no, I've been waiting to be on your oh, show. Oh my goodness. You know, uh, thank thank you. you. You know, and in, in God's eyes, we're all important. Yeah. And, uh, That's right. I, I worked with so many Good celebrities day. over the years. You know, all my childhood heroes, but. 
Many of them were unhappy. They didn't have the Lord, you know, and, and fame and fortune, That's true. it doesn't satisfy the soul. I don't, I don't have to read his bio. We just saw it. <laughs> That's right, we did. I, I love no, that. Though. I mean, Thank it, you. I mean, literally, you talk about your heel. Most of them were mine. Yeah, you know, what an opportunity. I met guys like Joe DiMaggio and Bob Hope. And, and you Charles got Joe Dimaggio Dimaggio to talk? Yes, Because I, I, I heard, I man, he didn't even talk to people. <laughs> well, I mean, if they'd go up to him in yeah. a restaurant. Right, right. He would, he would like, yeah. you know. Yeah, well, I knew not to ask him about Marilyn Monroe or about his son, <laughs> Joe Jr. You yeah. just asked the yeah. right questions. You do. And he was yeah. actually a very nice man. He wanted me to meet him seven hours before the show, and I thought it would be a 10-minute meeting. And I walked in, said, what an honor, Mr. DiMaggio. He said, call me, Joe. Sit down. Let's talk baseball. We talked baseball for seven hours. The, the producer came out at 10 minutes to 7 and said, we got to get you guys mic'd. We did a three-hour interview. Afterwards, did a, we talked for another hour. So I spent 10 hours with him that now, day. Now, your, your career in, as a sportscaster yes. started by accident. Yes. Well, I was in Springfield, Missouri. Went to college uh, there at Evangel University. And um, I came back for a homecoming that year, and uh, one of my professors said, hey, they're looking for someone over at uh, Channel 27 to read the sports. And uh, well, I, actually, they were looking for someone to work in the newsroom. Yeah, so that's I got a what job. I'm talking about. Right. Yeah. I got a job in the newsroom, and then they let, the owner knew they were going to let the sportscaster go and uh, said, would you like to audition? And I said, sure. Mm -hmm. And then they said, well, we're going to give you a live audition tonight on the news and wow. I, I jumped on and now, it went great and now, that was it. Now the, the, the whole idea, the reason he took this is because he had to sign a contract for millions of dollars. You know? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, seriously, was, tell them what you were making an hour. I, I was making $2.80 to start as a, an hour. As a sportscaster. Yes, in Springfield, Missouri. <laughs> then I got a raise to $2.85 wow. an hour. When I went to Chicago to work for a Christian television station, I was up to $5 an hour, and I thought that was a lot that of That sounds money. like Christian. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> Christian work. Yeah. This is a Christian television yeah. I keep telling the people, yes, when you yes. come to a Christian station, <laughs> That's Just right. understand, it's a missionary project. That's right. Okay. <laughs> yes. And I yes, and I always yes. tell them, have you ever heard yes. a missionary complain about their pay? No. <laughs> yeah, that's Don't right. complain. Yes. And our rewards are in heaven. That, then, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, so I had this great career going at, at uh, QVC. You know, 29 years there. Well, actually, at the time it was 25, and then suddenly our life was turned upside down when my wife Beth, who was the sweetest person in the world. Um, the reason I named it Hurricane yeah. of Love was she my is. niece wrote about her in a blog the day she passed and said, my Aunt Beth's love was like a hurricane. There's it the, there's the opportunity for you to get your, it is, I read the book, mm -hmm. it is riveting, mm -hmm. it is encouraging. It's the kind of book you want to read and pass it on to somebody because yes many people are going through a similar mm -hmm. situation yeah. just like you you so face. Yes. Where did you yeah. meet this her, wonderful woman? Well, it's it's interesting. I met her on a train, but I was going to say, if they go to Hurricane of Love, they can see an interview with me yeah. all about the book, and yeah. and they can order it right there, good. or Westbow Press or Amazon. But You're good. I met her. You're good. This I guy, know. This I, guy, I'm in sales, this guy right? is This guy is so good. That how many, yes. how many, how much money did you bring in for QVC? Uh, I guess my number was I'd sold over $4 billion worth of uh, merchandise Wow, when I left. That's great. But, and yes. and he was smart yes. enough to buy stock <laughs> because I was telling him my my friend my friend Bud Paxson, yes. uh, <laughs> I, I knew him well, and later on in his life he trusted yeah. Christ. Yes, and That's I was great. in his mansion yeah. right over here right. in Clearwater, Arna Water, yeah. yeah, and and it, I was sitting there waiting for him to come in the office. You wouldn't believe that that home. It was a, yeah. built by rolling uh, the guys that built the bridges in New York, wow. and and yeah. so. I'm looking at the wall and he goes, he walks in and he goes, you're looking at that, the stock certificate? I said, yeah. He goes, well, had you bought one just <laughs> like that? Yeah. He, I said, well, what is that worth? He goes, yeah. millions. <laughs> and I said, and he said, had you bought that, you would be worth millions too. Yeah. And that's, that's right. at the very beginning yes, yeah. of Home Shopping Network. Right. But you know what? My wife didn't marry me for my millions. And, and Sharon, you asked me how I met her. This yes. is a funny story. I was working for a Christian television station in Chicago, yeah. Channel 38, yeah. that yeah. you knew. Yeah, five we bucks an hour. We talked about that, right. <laughs> and I'm on a train and I'm wearing blue jeans yeah. and a t-shirt because I worked on the production crew and we were doing lighting and right. sets. Sure. And I'm sitting on the train and it stops at LaGrange and this girl gets on and I, I caught she I caught her out of the corner of my eye and I thought man she's kind of cute she sits right in the chair in front of me in the seat in front of me and there were plenty of open seats yeah. and I'm looking in the window uh, the window trying to, to see, see her reflection yeah. 
I'm like, she looked cute, and I don't know what possessed me. I tapped her on the shoulder, Sharon, and I said, I'm trying to read a book, and it's really boring. Would you mind if I join you? And she gave me the biggest, brightest smile and said, sure. And you I, are a super <laughs> salesman. <laughs> yeah, really. I, that was not typical for me. Uh. Herman, and um, we talked all the way into Union Station. We got off the train. I said, where do you work? She said, the Civic Opera House. I said, that's where I work, <laughs> that building. We're on top of the building. Wow. And we get to the Civic Opera House, and I said, I've got some time. Do you want to get lunch in the cafeteria? And again, she, oh, says, you're good. she says, sure. I'm thinking, I'm on a roll here. <laughs> that's right. So we go up. We get our food. We, I go to pay. I reach in Listen my pocket. This. Nothing. I pull out my wallet, not a dollar bill in my briefcase. She had to, I said, you're not going to believe this. And she's thinking I'm some kind of a scam sure, artist. Sure, sure. Yeah. She had to pay that first uh, day. And I said, I promise I'll take you out later in the week to a really nice Italian restaurant, which I couldn't afford. I think the bill was 20 bucks. Sure. And uh, so I A little I did. above your pay grade. That's right. <laughs> and, and then I used to say, yeah, she paid for the first meal, but then I paid ever since. Yeah, but right. no, you know what? She was the greatest lady and loved God with all her heart. And it was... Mm -hmm. You know, so the instant that we take found us, out. Take us on the walk, okay? Okay. okay. So well, I'm at. How, how this was discovered, because right. I, I got, read the book, and right. and she said to you, she got some, some indigestion, or she had some, stomach she was problems, really, stomach yeah. problems. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and you said, honey, you need to have that checked out. Right. I would say. And so she said to yeah. you. I don't want to go. To the I don't want to go because, and you said, why? Because they're going to find cancer. Right. It's like she knew. Yeah. And uh, this was in the beginning of the summer of 2012, and she would keep complaining. And I said, please, Beth, please, I'm going to pick you up and physically take you to the doctor. Mm -hmm. Well, she finally uh, called um, and made an appointment, and that was October 19th. And so I'm at QVC. October 19th, what year? Uh, 2012. It was a, a Friday, and I was at work. And I come out of a meeting and I see all these texts, please come home right away, please call me, where are you? And I called her and she said, you have to come home right away. The doctor, uh, they were doing the ultrasound and the nurse kept saying, this looks like cancer. I left the office, they called me up, said, we gotta get right back in here, we have to biopsy it. Biopsy it. And I walked into our house, I, I drove home immediately. I could, she was in our bedroom hugging a pillow and crying. And you know, I was like, it's gonna be okay. God's gonna be with us. Inside, I was scared yeah. to death. Oh, yeah. um, longest weekend of our lives that weekend, and then the next week it was confirmed it was malignant. Mm -hmm. And then you have a million questions. What kind of cancer? Where is yeah. it? Has it spread? And then and every time, you, you would be encouraged all the time, according to the book. Right, right. The doctor the would, would have a yeah. good look on his face. Right. It's like, oh, yeah. yeah, we're making progress. Right. How old was she at this time? Uh, she was, uh, she passed at 61, so she was 58. Oh. And I, so that, then we had the surgery, November uh, 15th, we got into the top guy at a big hospital in Philadelphia, and you're waiting about seven hours. I'm with my daughter, Kirsten, and they finally call your name up. It's so big, they don't even come to talk to you in person. You get a phone call, mm -hmm. and he said, Mr. Wheeler, um, I got what I could, unfortunately. And when I heard that word, it was like a bomb went off inside yeah. my brain. And yeah. Unfortunately, it's a more aggressive form of yeah. cancer than we thought. It spread throughout her abdomen. Yeah. All we can do is chemo. And, you know, my daughter's there, and she grabbed the phone. She's a nurse, which God uh, wow. kind of preordained that. She was an elementary ed major, and then halfway through her career, she decided she wanted to go into nursing, which was a blessing. She took us through all yes. the medical jargon yeah. and trying right. to understand. And, um, and then, um, you know, we... Now, now, now what, where are you working out of? I QVC. Was, I was working at QVC, but QVC was so good to me that once we started our chemo in January of 2013, they would let me call into all of my meetings. Really? So I, I had a little room at this big medical building that I'd go down now, you, the hall. You were a big you know deal like at QVC, though. Well, I, I mean, you were, weren't just like they I, were Lord. Good I like to what me. he was, just said, we, yeah, when yes, we started yes, our chemo. Right. That is so neat. I yeah, love that. We did it together, and yes. you know. Uh, and, and you're right, Herman, I was considered a senior host and they were yeah. very good to me. My boss mm -hmm. was a Christian and he would say to me, look, you're more important to me than this whole wow. network and all this, you know. You. Are you serious? Yeah. He would say, you, we've wow. got to take care of you. And so we began that journey of chemotherapy and, you know, she would get sick and nauseous. And But you but, said in the hospital, she was like, yeah. she was the encouragement to the was. people in the hospital. She was. And her roommate. Right. 
Right. When, when she was ready to leave, they said, you can leave the hospital. Now. She didn't want to go right. because she was concerned about her roommate. That, that was my Beth. She was yeah. always worried about everyone else. And the day that she was, after the surgery, yeah. she was come home. Uh, my daughter, Kirsten, called her and said, Mom, are you excited to come home? And she kind of paused. And she goes, Mom, are you excited to come home? She said, well, I am, but I'm concerned about my roommate. Uh, this older woman, she said, the nurses aren't giving her the attention that she needed. Here, my wife just had major surgery for cancer, had, you know, a total hysterectomy. She was getting up and getting this woman cold washcloths and helping her into the bathroom. And that was her, though, always concerned. Wow. Her love was like a hurricane. And I write in the book yeah. that it swept through the halls of medical clinics, hospitals. When she would leave a hospital, Herman, they w the nurses and the doctors would literally line the halls to hug her and they would cry. And they told uh, my doctor, uh, Beth's main doctor, I should say, through it all, told me Beth was her all time favorite patient. She said, I would do anything for your wife. She is so loving, so caring. Oh my that goodness. Now, now the, the staff at all of these hospitals, just as you say, yeah. uh, were, were that loving. When did you, because you, through all of this, you're thinking, we're going to lick this, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The chemo, and it, they kept yes. upping the dosage. Right, right. People praying probably all over. Yeah. All over the country. I had yeah. all my Facebook followers praying, and I believed mm -hmm. until the, the moment that she passed in heaven, I believed God would heal her. I Even after she stopped treatment, yeah. I believed. And well, I, you know, that's the kind of faith we have to have. You can't right. waver. Right. You can't yeah. pray and go, yeah. if. Yeah, right. You've got to believe. Yeah. But now, you know, now, God, now, God helps yes. us so much. When we started doing the chemo, we decided we would treat those chemotherapy sessions as if they were chemo dates. That's what I was going to get to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when we were in Chicago and started dating, we used to stop and get these chocolate croissants at a bakery on the way into work. And we found out that this building, there was a bakery in the building. And so when we'd go, she would go right upstairs to the doctor's office to check in. I'd go to the bakery, get us the chocolate croissants. And when we'd get into the chemo suite, we'd warm them up in, in the microwave mm -hmm. oven. And then at lunch, I'd go down, we liked their tomato basil soup. And so we treated that as a date, and we discovered that tomato basil soup and, and chocolate croissants, even if you're eating them in a chemo suite, it's okay if you're with the one you love. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, but that helped us handle that. And, yes. and um, you know. You, you could block out right. the, the reality. Yes, and, and focus on each other. And mm -hmm. I write in my book that when I look back, those were the three hardest, most difficult years of my life. I mean constant state of prayer, not sleeping, yeah. trying to figure it out, but they were also the most meaningful years of Through, my life. Throughout the book, you have pictures mm -hmm. of your kids being married. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. she was there. Yeah, she was there for my daughter Kirsten's wedding, and um, she was healthy for my other daughter's graduation from my Messiah yeah. College, which was a miracle. How many children do you have? We have two daughters. Yeah. Okay. And my oldest daughter Kirsten, everything came natural and easy for her, uh, but Kelsey had to work for everything, and she had a learning disability. They didn't think she'd ever make through high school. Well, through hard work, and my wife made sure we got her a tutor. My wife had struggled in, in school and did not want that for my daughter. Well, yeah. that daughter ended up graduating from Messiah College with honors, <laughs> went on the next year and did a two-year master's program in one year and graduated summa cum laude. She had a 3.99. She's now a social worker, just got promoted, and the county called her one day and said, well, Kelsey Wheeler, you are apparently our greatest success story. And Kelsey says, what do you mean? She goes, we just took you off our rolls. You were someone that we thought we'd have to help that could never have a job. You're now one of our best social workers in the county. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, oh Jesus. Oh, my goodness. goodness. Yeah. What unlocked your daughter? Well, we got a tutor. It was her third grade teacher who That's just really thing. loved her and was patient. Mm -hmm. I tried to help her, but Kelsey would get so frustrated. And this woman was so patient, and Kelsey learned to, to work hard, would just drill herself with three by five cards all the time. But again, it was my wife, Beth, hurricane of love. Her love was like a hurricane. It was, she had the unique ability, you guys. If you would have met her, the instant you met her, uh, you would have felt like you'd known her all your life. She made everyone. I've got my two buddies in the studio, Brian and Terry. Who hey, Brian and Terry, yeah. wave because they're going to get yeah. a shot of Hey, guys. There okay, they are. now they're connected with you on your ministry. Yes. Yes. Uh, there they are right there. Yeah. There they are. They do. Uh, good looking my wife. guys. Yeah, they, they are, aren't they? They're pretty good looking guys. Um, so they came and stayed with me, you know, and after Beth's, we called it a celebration of life service. And her, uh, by the way, her service is still on YouTube. Close to 40,000 people have viewed it. It was live streamed wow. out of our church. And I've heard from people around the world. People have actually gotten saved 
given their heart to Jesus watching oh, that service. My brother-in-law is a, a minister, and he did an unbelievable job. Mm. And But uh, Beth, you know, and I wanted people to know about her. I, I write in the book, I've been on national TV for 30 years, but she was the real star of the family. And um, she taught me how to live in the present, which is one of the, my big messages in this book. Yeah. Don't miss right now, and you know. That's what she, you know. She, she's taught me that. Have you? Yes, yeah. Yes. Yeah. She said memories. Right. Yes. And I, I would show up, you know, because doing TV, you know how that is. Yeah. Not, nothing at your caliber, but well, we would show up rushing. places or yeah. whatever, and I would go, you know, I don't really want to go, and she'd go, <laughs> memories, memories, <laughs> memories, make memories, and, that, and actually un yes. unlock something. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the kind of the title I see that they put up for yeah. our show today, Making Memories yeah. Through the Pain. Mm -hmm. My wife uh, knew how to live in the present. She was always telling our yeah. kids, get off those cell phones. And yeah. really, it's a message for all of us. Today, you walk into a restaurant, mm -hmm. you'll see a couple sitting across from each other, and uh, they're both on their phones. We say the same yeah, thing. Yeah, right. exactly We're right. not where we yeah. need to be. Be present. My yeah. wife, we have a little sitting room, this story I know you read in the book. Yes. Um, and there's no TV in there, just a, a yeah. lazy boy chair, a couch, and a hutch. Perfect. Now, that's the way to live. Yeah. yeah perfect room to have conversations. Yeah. She loved to have her morning coffee before yeah. she got sick and she used to pat the couch. Our nickname for each other was Cakey's. We started with yeah, baby Yeah, I was going to ask what was, yeah, yeah, because I got it written yeah. right here. C-A-K-I-E-S. Yeah, yeah. yeah, what is that? Yeah. Started as baby cakes, then cakes, then I don't know, cakey's and evolved yeah. to. <laughs> she tapped the, the couch next to her and said, Cakey's, come sit. Have a cup of coffee with me. And regrettably, so many times, mm -hmm. you know, Herman, you, you got a show to do. I got to prep. I got to, oh, Beth, I, I got to get in Your work. mind's going like yeah. this. Yeah. I don't have time to sit. Well, once we got that diagnosis, I always sat. Uh, mm -hmm. She became yeah. priority number one. Tell me, when, when did you hear from the doctor himself, stage four? You know, I never actually heard it. The first time we went in after the surgery to meet with him, my wife and my daughter sat in the office and I saw her report on his desk. It said, Beth Wheeler, stage four cancer. And wow. that was, oh my goodness. And I texted my daughter who was on the other side of Beth and I said, I see the report, it says stage four. And she goes, oh no. And we kind of tried to get Beth's attention away. They never told us though. It was stage four until about um, three weeks before she passed, we were in a big hospital and things weren't working. They, her, her body stopped producing platelets. You know, the Bible says the life is in the blood. And yes. her, her bone marrow had stopped producing these platelets that you need to live. And they kept giving her, we had to get these super matched HLA platelets through the Red Cross. They scour the country to match exactly to Beth's platelets because her body would reject regular platelets when they give it to her. They thought it was a form of, uh, for, um, a foreign substance and yeah. they would chew them up. So they gave her these platelets. They said it will work. It will fire her bone marrow up. Well, we we were on this roller coaster. Yeah. We get the report. Her platelets sky. They're up to like fifty thousand. Then they'd be back down to ten. Then back down to three. You and I, our platelets are between one hundred and fifty thousand to four hundred thousand milliliters per square inch. Beth dropped to three thousand. They gave her a bag of platelets one day. They went further to twenty three hundred. It was danger wow. level. And finally, one day after a roller coaster, several weeks, the team of doctors, you had teams of doctors. I had uh, the hemoglobin doctors. And you had great insurance. Yeah, we had good insurance. Yeah. Thank the Lord for yeah. that. I mean, I think that the chemo treatments were something like fifteen to 20,000 yeah. per. Yeah. And she probably did 50, yeah. 60 yeah. Oh my rounds goodness. of chemo. And um, they called me in one day and, and they said, Dan, it's not working. What yeah. do you want to do? And I said, I want to bring her home. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I don't want her dying in the hospital, so we're yeah. able to bring her home. I'm sorry, I still get emotional, but sure. um, that's great. That's great. You know, we had her home, and my friends and my family were there, and we had prayer meetings nonstop in her room, and we saw so many miracles. I have a a neighbor who is a helicopter mechanic. Uh, not he's a blue collar worker, uh, not what you would consider a preacher or eloquent. One day, I heard a soft tap on the door. And I opened it and it was Daryl and he said, Dan, I've been wrestling with God all night. I feel like I have a message I'm supposed to give to Beth. And I knew this man, I knew he loved the Lord. And I said, let me check with Beth. And she said, could I get cleaned up first? And then I'll talk to Daryl. Well, he waited 45 minutes in my kitchen. I brought him in and he transformed into Billy Graham. It was wow. the most powerful <laughs> wow. message I've ever, thank you, I've ever heard. He said, Beth, I've got good news for you. And he quoted, the story in Matthew 9 of the woman who had the issue of blood. Yes. He didn't know Beth had an issue with her blood. Wow. And he, that was the story. And first of all, that got my attention. 
And he said, but she knew that if Jesus walked by and he, she reached out and touched the hem of his garment, yeah. she would be healed. And he said, Beth, Jesus is here. And if you get scared in the next few days, reach out and touch his garment. And he's either going to heal you now or ultimately in heaven. But oh, that's right. the good news. Wow. You're going to be healed. Wow. Well, my wife couldn't even lift her hands. She yeah. was filling with fluid yeah. after yeah. she stopped treatment. Hands were swollen. She couldn't even wipe a tear from her eye. We had to wipe them for her several times. Her eyes would be closed, she'd be asleep, or we didn't know if she was asleep. We'd walk in and we'd see her hands go straight up in the air to reach out and touch Jesus' oh. garment. And she told us, when my brother-in-law arrived, he sat down the edge of the bed and he said, how are you doing, Beth? And she had stopped treatment. She said, Ron, I'm sad. I don't want to leave Dan and my girls and my family, but I'm not afraid. I know where I'm going. Mm -hmm. I know I'm going to see Jesus. Share it's, that message with somebody yeah. watching right now. About, yeah, about two minutes. Absolutely. You know, if you're going through a hard time, mm -hmm. I want you to know that God is there for you. He was with my wife and I through our journey, through every step of it, every mm -hmm. difficult moment, He was there. He showed us signs along the way. I write a lot about the miracles we saw along the way. I had do a doctor who was a Christian. His whole schedule was intercepted so he could be at the exact point I was when I needed to hear that God was there and God was hearing my prayers. Um, he gave us messages like the one I just shared from my neighbor, but my wife knew Jesus. She had accepted the Lord as her savior. And when you know the Lord, you have eternal life. The Bible says, for God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall never perish, but have eternal life. And he's offering that to you today if you don't know him. Accept Jesus. Just pray that simple prayer. Say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I'm a sinner. Come into my heart Amen. and make me new. And he will. Amen. He will transform your life. And you can say like my wife could say, I'm sad, but I'm not afraid. We don't have to fear death. The Bible says, oh, death, where is your victory? Amen. Oh, grave, where is your Amen. sting? Mm -hmm. God has conquered death through Jesus. He yeah. died for you yeah. and he yeah. rose again. Yeah. He Amen. defeated death so we can truly live forever. And you, if you don't know Jesus today, I pray that you'll accept him and, uh, and know like my wife know. I know where she is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, she was the love of my life. We were married almost 31 years. We dated six years. It took me a while to make up <laughs> my mind. But um, she, uh, I know where she is. She's waiting for me. And I'm going to be with her again. And that really helps with my sadness. And I have a chapter I call Good Grief. Yeah. And it was how I worked through the grief because I've heard from so many people mm -hmm. that have said they're struggling with grief. And I had a counselor that said, Dan, Beth is in heaven cheering you on. You still have a race to run. Run your race. Amen. And that's the message. Wow, Go to wonderful. that website and right. they can find out your ministry, right? Yes. Fearless he gave, Faith. He yep. gave us cups. Yes. <laughs> so we have cups to remember yes. him by. Fearless Faith on Facebook and they can if, hear our morning cups. If you right. trusted Christ as your Savior, write to us. Mm -hmm. You were prayed for with the big guy at QVC. <laughs> God bless you. Bye-bye. <laughs>